And uh, I just texted you just a moment ago a uh, devotional that I wanted to begin our time with today, guys. Thank you so much for your flexibility this week in getting this, uh, this uh, call put together. I know for some of us, this has really caused you to finagle some things around. So I really, really appreciate it. I want you to know that I had a number of conversations this week with people and I could tell they were really, really excited when that conversation ended. And what I was talking about was you. <laughs> I was talking about you and what God is doing in you and what God is doing through this experience in you. I also, a week from this Friday, here comes Ron. Also, a week from this Friday, I will be flying to Casper, Wyoming. And I'm going to have the opportunity to share for the Church of God uh, General Assembly in the state of uh, Casper, uh, Casper, Wyoming. Um, Casper's where I used to pastor. Good morning, Ron. Good morning. <laughs> and uh, I'll be flying on Friday, and I'm going to get to speak to the state pastors gathering. They call it the General Assembly. And I'm going to again be talking about you. I'm going to be talking about what um, God has been doing in you and um, encouraging these guys and these three pillars of this study of God's way of defining vision, God's way of, of communicating, and God's way of moving people. How did God get people to move? How did he, how did he get them to commit to something maybe they'd never even thought of before? And so uh, I appreciate your prayers for that. A week from Friday, over the weekend of October 21 and 22, and I have that chance there. So, so glad you guys are here. Let's begin. And uh, Ron Culp, since you're last, how about you open us in a word of, <laughs> word of prayer today, would you please? All right, sure, I'd be happy to. All right. God, thank you for today and for this opportunity to uh, fellowship, but also learn from um, my brothers here gathered on this Zoom call. And I just pray you would guide our conversations, um, may you be glorified, and um, I just look forward to uh, what each one has to sh share today. And and so just thank you again for this opportunity. We love you, Jesus, and pray in your name. Amen. 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 Ron, the Rons will have a chance to speak here in just a moment. In fact, the order we're going to go in, Ron Witten, I'm going to ask you to go first here in just a bit. And uh, Ron Culp will be last. And then I'm going to play the video that uh, Joey and I recorded last week. Uh, you get about 15 to 20 minutes, 15 minutes maybe each at the most. And uh, because of where you guys are in in this process, I'm going to ask you to share uh, just about where you are. What are we studying now? Uh, what are you, what do you have, what conversations are you having based on where we are? And maybe what, what God is doing in you as a result of uh, where we are in our study today. I know it's been a whole week, so you may have to think about it for a minute, uh, what we've been talking about. But um, that's the order we're going to go in. Joey's going to be sharing a very powerful testimony. In fact, I'll just give you a heads up. He got to baptize his two daughters. Um, was it last week or the week before? And... It is a reflection of one of his vision pictures. So um, I can't wait for you to hear that. Let's turn to the devotion wow. that I texted you just a moment ago. This is a devotional uh, called My Utmost for His Highest. You can tell it's been uh, used a little bit at our house. And um, um, this is probably our sixth or seventh year. So this has been a weird very, very eye-opening experience because I had this tucked under my arm for years and God began speaking to me 21 years ago about what you and I are talking about. I had never read anything that would even affirm that what I'm hearing from God is, is where he was leading and anybody else was thinking this way until I opened up this devotional to start reading with my wife. My utmost for his highest is the name of the devotional, Oswald Chambers. I read this over my wife practically every night. And 
because there's two scriptures in the New Testament that talk about how God's word cleanses the spirit of our spouse. And I cannot tell you the transformation that has taken place, not only in my wife, but in our relationship, because every night before we go to sleep, we read God's word together and a, and a thought. So I'm in this devotional. We started this, like I said, six or seven years ago. And uh, I keep wanting to move on, but I can't. Because every time we open another one of these up, even though we've read it this many years, it's like a brand new word. But what's almost eerie is that I'm hearing reflected in this book what God has been saying to me that has led me to what we're doing together today. Case in point is the devotion I want us to share together today quickly. Thank God for being able to see all that you have not yet been. You have had the vision, but are not yet to the reality of it by any means. It is when we are in the valley where we prove whether we will be choice ones that most of us turn back. We are not quite prepared for the bumps and the bruises that must come if we're going to be turned into the shape of the vision. We have seen what we are not and what God wants us to be, but are, are we willing to be battered into the shape of the vision to be used by God? The beatings will always come in the most common, everyday ways and through common, everyday people. There are times when we do not know what God's purpose is, whether we, we will let the vision be turned into actual character depends on us, not on God. If we prefer to relax on the mountaintop and live in the memory of the vision, then it will be of no real use in the ordinary things of which human life is made. We have to learn to live in reliance upon what we saw in the vision, not simply live in the ecstatic delight in conscious reflection upon God. This means living in the realities of our lives in the light of the vision until the truth of the vision is actually realized in us. Every bit of training is in that direction. Learn to thank God for making his demands known. Our little I am always sulks and pouts when God says do. Let your little I am be shriveled up in God's wrath and indignation. I am who I am has sent me to you. Exodus 3.14. He must dominate. It isn't piercing to realize that God not only knows where we live, but also knows the gutters into which we crawl. He will hunt us down as fast as a flash of lightning. No human being knows human beings as God does. Mm. And you see the scripture there to the right, 1 Corinthians 1, 2, to those who are called to be saints. That's the foundational passage in this. So there's a couple of things in this devotional that really have captured my heart and have edified what I have a sense God is saying to me about this whole concept of vision and that he speaks, that, he speaks about this definition of this word as a vision for you. It is, it is a very personal insight that God is trying to help us see that he has for us. It edifies and clarifies again that the definition of vision in the world and in the corporate world is not the definition God holds. The definition the world has for us is a vision is a plan, or it's a great idea, or it's a God-inspired um, direction. I hear it all the time. I heard it again this weekend at Mac U. Wonderful. Everybody, that's, that's the definition of vision that most people have been taught their whole life, that God has given us a vision, and then it's going to be about a building. It's going to be about a new project, or a new staff member, or, or a, a new ministry, and what I'm seeing in this devotion is that, like what I sense God was saying to me, Oswald Chambers, and this was written, by the way, in England in, was it 1700s? This, is, this booklet is a conglomeration of... Um, a class that Oswald Chambers taught at Oxford University. Here it is. Nah, I'm not seeing it. But this was the original version of this was written in the 1700s. And to see this in writing in from someone that is not modern today, clarifying that a vision from God is a vision for me and other people. It's not a project. It's not, and so forth. 
what's other insights or takeaways that you see um, from this devotion today that might clarify something we're talking about or just catch your eye? I got something to share, I guess. If you want me to share, otherwise I can read it again if you want me to no, read it again. No, no, no. I want you to I want you to share. Yeah. Um I've had a pretty couple tough weeks uh this last couple weeks. Uh, it it was kind of an up and down roller coaster, the high roller coaster all the way down to the bottom where you're speed into the curve all of a sudden uh kind of jerks you a little bit. Um I've had a rough week, rough couple of weeks, and it all it all has to do with vision and where we're headed. Uh, my church is working on a a uh, residency program to train rural pastors. Uh, we call it a greenhouse in our denomination. And we got our assessment back in. It was about where I expected to be, some high points and some real low points. And uh, my board saw it and just kind of freaked out. And, uh, well, we're terrible. We, 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 can, we can't do this. We're terrible. And the whole point of it was to show us where we're at and then move forward. Like, let's work on an area and strengthen it. That's why we do this. Uh, they didn't get that. Uh, they just thought we're terrible. And uh, I've been introducing this whole idea of vision pictures. I've been preaching through a few of them. And I have one guy that is is very, very, just we'll just say nasty. <laughs> and uh, and uh, he kind of got on what we're doing, how we're doing it, and kind of got off the whole point of the assessment just to beat up on me a little bit. And uh, I just come off of a, a district conference and there, I was kind of built up a get because it kind of happened before this at, at district conference. And I talked with my district superintendent and and other people that are interested in what's going on and uh, kind of encouraged, okay, yeah, this is good. This is just a naysayer. It's part of the, I know this is coming. And uh, and then I got back and I got a call from somebody, a, a fellow pastor that somebody had talked to, this, this person had talked to, and I got told that I don't know how to preach and I got to preach expositionally. And it kind of put me in the, in the crapper, just to say it pretty bluntly. <laughs> and uh, and I, I'm my own worst enemy, I always have been. And so God has been teaching me through this just to trust him and to trust the vision and, and his, who he, who he said I am. Did Paul freeze up or is that just me? I think it was Paul. Okay. <laughs> did, did I freeze up? Yeah, yeah, yeah there you go. You're, you're back. <laughs> oh, okay. a good pose, though. Where, 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 did I, where did I leave off? Because I just been talking like crazy. I, uh, you were coming out of the crapper, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I was down in the crapper, and this has been good. Uh, just this was a good reminder, and I've been coming out of it as it goes. But uh, I'm my own worst enemy when it comes to my identity, and that's something that God has really worked on me through this. Is just Christ, and just a reminder of hey, uh, this stuff comes from. Mm. welcome to rural minnesota yeah yeah let him hang in there for just a minute he said he finished with just reminds me <laughs> am i back yeah you said just <laughs> reminds me and then we lost you yeah it just reminds me of of the fact that uh this 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 vision this this process isn't going to be it's God's, it's like, it's God who gave it to me. And so trust him. And that, that's the biggest thing for me. Just, you know what? It may not look pretty right now, but I know that ah. in eight years. He usually doesn't have this much trouble. What is going on? <laughs> we heard, I know that. <laughs> Okay, I'm back then, eh? I'm yeah. sorry. That's all right. So this was just a good reminder of God, just to trust God that these, I know that things are, are going to be rough, but people are moving that haven't moved in eight years. Hmm. And they're small steps, but they're big steps for these people. And so trust him because it's God doing it. It isn't me. I'm not that special, but but God is, doing, is, is proving faithful. You bet. And so to trust him in that, even though the world around me is saying, you stink. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah. I wish Paul had time to tell some of the uh, triumphs of some of the people as he's begun teaching on vision pictures. Um, he is um, he is pre precluding sermons about vision pictures by leading his leadership through 
these ideals uh, ahead of time, a, a month in advance, if not more. And uh, I wish he had time to talk about um, some of the people, and especially the older people that have been incredibly transformed by some individual mm. uh, topics within God's vision through him. Um, mm. So if you want to hear those stories, you can contact Paul on a good Wi-Fi day and uh, hear those <laughs> stories. So, <laughs> <laughs> Hey, brother, thanks so much. Uh, Paul has actually uh, just recently completed this journey uh, as of the 1st of September, and yet uh, has asked that I would uh, send him an invitation to be a part of what we're doing here. He's already been through all of his personal vision pictures, all of the vision pictures for his people, all of the non-negotiable stuff, um, all of it. And now he is in the middle of preaching on and teaching on these. So, Paul, thanks again for, for joining us today. Thank you. You bet. Wow. Yeah. So uh, I want to lean into my brother, Ron. Uh, we have been uh, very, very busy the last couple of days, so it may take him a minute to dial in on exactly where we were before all of our meetings. But uh, Ron and I have been working together six months or a little better. And I think, uh, about, Ron, huh? I think about nine or 10 now. Is it really? Oh, my. Yeah, uh, I know. <laughs> take a minute real quick and tell these guys who you are and where what you do and where you're from real quick all righty uh first of all I'm glad to meet everybody uh, uh, via zoom which seems to be the way we meet most people these days uh, <laughs> uh but anyway i live in peoria illinois um have uh always I've been a Christian for a long time, but I've really grown up in the business world. Um, I have owned, operated, and built several businesses. Um, but over the last, I, I had told Todd, or I, Todd and I are on a, a MACU board together, and he uh, got up in front and talked one day. And I just, as I said to Todd, I felt like no matter what I was doing, it just wasn't fulfilling anymore, right? It, I told him, I said, it didn't matter how much time I gave. It didn't matter how much money I gave. It was just like, it was just like repetition. And so Todd and I started down this journey about nine or 10 months ago. And, and uh, it was, it's been nothing like I thought it would be, although I really didn't have any idea what it would be. But uh, Todd makes me do a lot of thinking on topics that I've never given much thought to um, and makes me aware of many things that I didn't realize were influencing not only me, but what people perceived of me. Um, and if nothing else, I have learned that it's not about better or more. It's about completely different. <laughs> Uh, and he has drilled that into me. So anyway, uh, <laughs> and, and he continues to drill it into me when I when I make the mistake. Um, but anyway, it's been, uh, I don't know if I can say life-changing. That might not even be uh, strong enough words, but um, I'm, I'm happy to be on this journey and really happy to see where, where we go. You bet. You bet. You're married and a couple of kids. Oh. Oh, you want that stuff too? Sure. <laughs> yes, uh, married uh, with uh, two children. They're both out of the house and in their 30s. So I would say on their own, but I'm not quite sure that in your 30s they're on their own anymore yet. Uh, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> we, My wife and I are very active in the uh, Pekin First Church of God, which is where we have attended for many, many years. Uh, we're on the strategic planning committee and just very engaged it's not a very big church uh we used to have 250 to 300 people we've probably got 80 or 90 people now but <clears throat> what i will say is it might be we might have had two or 300 people before but it wasn't a very uh engaged church i guess i will say um, a lot of pew setters um the good news now with uh, such a small church that everything we do pretty much everybody has to be involved in something <laughs> uh so uh yeah so that's kind of our <clears throat> it's kind of our passion um several years ago the church was splitting which this church has done multiple times mm. and actually many many people that of our friends were leaving and uh 
you know, my wife and I had an opportunity to make that decision. And we both just decided we'd rather stay and help the people that remained rather than to flee off to the, the greener pasture. Um, and it's been, it's been absolutely rewarding for the both of us just to, to be so engaged with people and to see, uh, to see what people bring to the party that they don't even know they have once you start inviting them and getting them engaged. Mm -hmm. Can you share just briefly about the conversation you and your wife are in with your pastor right now? Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes, we, uh, we have, uh, we're both Catholic. So we were baptized uh, <laughs> quote unquote, many, many, many years ago, like when it wasn't our choice. Uh, but yes, we are both uh, walking down the path of getting baptized. Uh, we will soon be setting up a time to meet with our pastor to try to understand what all that means, because we don't want it to be just a ritual. We really need to understand what is what does that mean? Um, I think my wife is 100 percent ready to be there from that standpoint. I just got to get her to stand up in front of the church. <laughs> She's uh, she likes to she likes to stay in the background on things, but uh, but we'll get it we'll get it done. It'll just take a little little walking, a little nudging. So that's awesome, awesome. Yeah, that's we're pretty excited about that. Yeah, and that has come uh, a motivated uh, experience a couple of months ago when yeah. you and you and I had the opportunity to talk about what does salvation mean. And we were actually talking about communication mindsets at the time, and we got to the salvation ending uh, motivation. And uh, through that discussion and others, um, I got yep. to got to uh, walk through a very wonderful uh, prayer time with you. So, um, can you share with these guys now uh, where we are, what you're working on, and uh, maybe what God seems to be doing? through it and you've got about eight minutes or so here all right yes we are Todd and I are currently on the communication mindset uh we're I don't know we're maybe uh, two-thirds of the way through it um it's been a it's been an, an, an enlightening discussion and process and to be honest with you things that I had never really given any thought to um and it's making me do a lot of deep thinking about, you know, how I communicate and not only that and how others communicate and maybe trying to understand um, why they communicate the way they communicate. And, um, you know, I think it's I think we all get this way, at least I've always in a business. We're kind of like we're always fast paced. We're always on the move and we always are quick to kind of either cast off someone or judge someone and that's absolutely the wrong thing to be doing um so this communication mindset that todd and i are doing um it's really just making me evaluate myself and as i told todd there's i don't know that i'm like any one of them 100 percent, but i've got a little of several of them in me <laughs> and and sometimes depending on the situation may fluctuate as to which one takes the lead um, but it's making me aware of myself because until I'm aware of where I'm at, I can't possibly try to understand how Jesus would be doing this. Right. Mm -hmm. And the whole goal is to understand where I'm at, how Jesus would do this. And then how does that make me, you know, and I was not a better business person, not a better husband, not a better, a better person in general. Right. That I don't want to put it in a box and say, hey, I want it's gonna be a better business person, but no, how about just a better person? How about someone who uh tries to be sympathetic about those that they're dealing with and understanding? And here's the thing: I've never been a yeller, I've never been a screamer, that's not who I am. So I just kind of thought, well, as long as I'm not yelling and I'm not screaming at people and I'm not beating the table, I'm being compassionate and understanding. But that's not necessarily true, um, right? Um, I remember I used to play on a very uh, competitive softball team. 
and nothing more challenging than trying to lead a bunch of jocks and great athletes, but it's all for, they're not getting paid. So you don't have, you don't motivate them by pay, but I'll never forget. I always used to say to them, Hey, I know I don't yell at you and I don't scream at you when you do things wrong. And every one of them said, no, but you have a glare and you turn around and look at us. <laughs> so, so got to understand that glare is as much communication as words are. Right. So this whole communication mindset has really made me very much aware of the words, the actions, my communication style to, to improve upon or com- not, and not even improve, completely change the way I, I have been operating the first 64 years of my life. <laughs> As <laughs> I told remember- Todd, maybe if, this might have been a little easier if we just started this 20 years ago. But- <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard that. <laughs> Do you remember uh, of the mindsets we studied, uh, those that you could relate to? Um, yeah, I've got them written down here. Um, sometimes I'm the convincer mindset, right? There's times that that's part of who I am. Um, there's times I'm the professor mindset, um, right? I've... I always felt like in business, it was my responsibility. If I'm going to be a leader, my responsibility was always to study the topic, know the topic and be very well prepared. But unfortunately, when you do that, which is great, but when you do that, you also have a tendency to to think that the others don't have much thought process of what you're talking about. So uh, I really don't want your input too much because you haven't given it much time and energy like I've given it. And that probably not fair to fair to, to be that way. Um, so those two, the professor, the convincer, um, those two I had down. Um, those are the two so far, Todd, that I yeah. really, oh, no, and the entertainer. Ah. Um, I've always been a person who liked uh, to interject humor into things, uh, especially when I think that things might be getting too, uh, too heavy. Yeah. Uh, so those three definitely are, are, are part of who I am at this moment, maybe not going forward, but at this moment. Excellent. Paul and Keith have been through this farther than anybody else here today. Would either of you speak into that study of what God spoke to you about? Uh, as we walk through those mindsets, Keith, uh, Keith why don't you, can you jump in here? Sure. They, you know, uh, I like probably all well, the rest of you had a kind of a smattering of those. I, one of the things that Todd and I have talked about a lot, I, I grew up as a mechanic on a farm. And um, so I have everything that I do seems to be analyzed from a mechanic standpoint. That's kind of interesting being a pastor now. <laughs> so, you know, just communicating in such a, such a way that looking at a situation, well, here's how to fix it. One, two, three, four. Yep. And um, just, you know, completely sometimes dismissing how other people might be even looking at things and then getting frustrated. Well, why can't you see this? the way that I see this, Uh, you know, those are, those are one of the things that uh, through this process of just learning uh, that we communicate in different ways and that uh, not everybody communicates the same way that I communicate and not everybody can understand me when, when I approach a subject, Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, to start to ask the questions, to start to, to give the bigger bigger picture i mean to me it's let's go to the technical manual uh let's look up the specs and and let's go for it you know let's uh look at the situation diagnose it here's the problem here's the steps to fix it let's fix it well i don't that don't work so well with people (laughs) (laughs) well at least not most people yeah paul how about you (laughs) this has been some time ago since we studied this um, do you remember one of those descriptions that you could relate to and what God has done to transform that more toward the way Jesus would communicate? Yeah, I think for me, um, I, I, I was a smattering as well, probably two or three main ones that I would fluctuate between, but I love, uh, 
lecturer slash professor. I mean, those were my two big ones. I love the brain work. I, I love that. And when I would, when I would, when I would speak that way, I guess there was, you all probably have done the pride survey, I would assume. And, uh, I guess my motivation for speaking that way wasn't about people. And that's one, that's one of the biggest things that God is working on and changing is, uh, if I'm up there speaking, it's not to look good. It's not to sound pretty or sound intelligent. It's, it's to help people come to know Christ. And so in that study, God has kind of transformed how I look at it in, in, instead of me, I'm, I'm looking good because I sound smart. <laughs> not, about, not about people, are people getting Jesus? Because that's what's the most important thing. And so that's what worked on me in that my go-to would be that because I love to sit and study. I love to learn. And when it comes across, it came across as heady and this is Paul instead of, hey, this is Jesus. So that's kind of really what he's showing me in that mm -hmm. and working on in that still today. Can you speak into the sledgehammer mindset for a moment? Because that was also one that you had spoken quite a bit about. Yeah, the, the sledgehammer, I got to remember now, but I, I have a tendency to... Uh, to draw a line in the sand and uh, just hit you with the truth and love it or leave it kind of is my attitude. And uh, this is right. And so deal with it. And so that has been something that God has uh, worked on as well. Softening in my heart to be about people, not just about what is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. What's so difficult about this study, you guys, is that the way we communicate today has crept up on us over the years. It's not some decision we even can really say we made. It's just kind of who we are. Mm -hmm. It's so deeply ingrained in us that, like Ron said, some of this has just made me think about stuff I've never thought about because a lot of things in our life have just evolved over the years into who we are how we talk to people, how we treat people, how we think, you know. Um, uh, many of us have talked a lot about stinking thinking. We've talked about how, how when we try to understand God's will through our mind, we do it that way because that's the way we've always done it. And to start thinking about processing and listening to the Lord in our soul, well, it's in black and white in the Bible, but I have been this other way for so long that this is just, earth shaking for me to think about living communicating or leading a different way and that's why ron the words the the, the language of better and more has no place in following yeah. jesus because i will continue to use myself as a reference for how am i doing if i let better and more thinking and language be a part of that mm -hmm. and you know, I was guilty of that my whole life. And that's why I walked around beating myself up all the time because it was always about me. And the minute I was, I became aware that it was about Jesus. It is not about me. Different was the language God was leading, uh, leading me into. So awesome. Ron, I am so excited for, do I? God, I just want to share something with you, too, because I think it's kind of interesting. You know how we're all about planting seeds, and you never know how that seed's going to grow, and that's really a big part of what we, we need to be doing. It's so funny because yesterday in our drive back, uh, Pastor Steve had put something on Facebook or somewhere, and my wife had seen it, and she turns to me and she goes, he used those. He used those words better and more again. He's got to quit. You. <laughs> <laughs> better and, more. and literally, that was Todd. That was just from that one weekend when you were in town. She literally goes up. Oh, he's used. She's. He's using those words again. <laughs> so, so it, it does make an impact. Yeah. So I had the great privilege of, in, in, in addition to trying to work with Ron. But he was, I, I, I came to Peoria and he was sick the whole time. We never did get to really have our time together. And then I caught COVID over that weekend. It was a, a disaster of a weekend. But we did get to share with his leadership team uh, some of the concepts that we are working on. So when it came comes time for you as a leader to lead, 
at least there's some common vocabulary. There's some common language. If you were to walk into your church a year ago, hey, we're not using better and more any longer. People would look at you like, what are you talking about? You know, when you start yeah. talking about vision pictures and you start talking about um, uh, uh, um, um, journey and destination identity, you start using that terminology, people are going to go, what planet did you come from? Yeah. And so, um, man, that this conversation you're having is a product of that. Or here, your wife has caught this idea and now holding your pastor accountable for it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, it's it's all in due time. So lots of grace in this, uh, un, this clunky season when we, we hear some of this new terminology and new ideology and we start to try to put it into practice. It's clunky for everybody. So, yep. Um, yep. Oh, good. Awesome, man. Thank you so much. I wish we had an hour for each of you. Unfortunately, I'm trying to honor your time today. So, Ron, I'm going to play uh, Joey's testimony here next. And let me get it queued up and ready. And then uh, and then we'll swing back to you. And uh, if you need an interpreter, I totally understand here with uh, Joey Petmiller. He's from Louisiana. <laughs> he is, he is uh, the senior pastor of the Liberty Grove Church of God in Louisiana. And uh, let me get this situated without much more introduction here. Hey, guys. Uh, Joey Petmiller here. Um, just remind you real quick of where I'm at. I'm down in uh, West Monroe, Louisiana, uh, pastor in Liberty Grove Church of God. And... Um, been here for almost three years, been working with Todd for right at two years. And this month, October, it will be two full years. And uh, it's been a great time. But um, Todd asked me to share uh, some of our vision pictures that were at least one of them that I'm working on here that we've been working on. And uh, the one I want to share with you today uh, is this vision picture of um, I can imagine transforming into a man who consistently influences his children towards Christ. Um, just to give you a little bit of context of, of why that vision picture uh, came about um, before even talking about that vision picture or even before having, having this uh, relationship with Todd, this journey, starting on this journey with Todd, um, I've always led my children in a, in a godly way. Um, I was raised in a Christian home. Uh, I tell Todd and other folks that I, I trusted in God before I actually knew who he was. Uh, it was just the way that we were raised. And um, so I, in, in return, that's how I raise my children, you know, biblical principles. I'm a pastor, uh, obviously we're in church and Sunday school and my kids are learning about Jesus. But, um, when we began to think about consistently influencing, um, there was something missing there, uh, mainly the consistency part. Um, obviously I want to influence my children towards Christ and, and to know about him. But, uh, what I found was that uh, as I live life and the challenges that come up in life, I um, would experience moments of, of distraction or moments of interference. And whether it was a bad board meeting or just a tough day at the office or even, even experiencing hurt and emotional pain um, through loss or, or something to do with relationships, I would come in and, and my consistency would not be there. Um, uh, my influencing of them would not be so much towards uh, towards a Christ-like manner anymore. Uh, I would be shorter. Um, I would react differently um, in, in a more negative, harsher way uh, to the point where I wasn't displaying, even for myself, the characteristics of what I believe Christ is known as and so uh, is known for. And so um, this vision picture uh, it comes from that comes from that, that, that I believe that God is, is changing me, uh, to become a man, not just who is influencing his children towards Christ, but who is consistently influencing, um, his children towards Christ to, uh, lead my children with a, a steady attitude of wisdom and grace, uh, the grace of God, actually to encourage them in their everyday walk for, to encourage them in their growth. And, and how God, what God wants for them in their lives and who God's created them to be. Um, and so I believe that, that 
as God transforms me into this man uh, who consistently influences his children towards Christ, he's also beginning to transform my children into the people he's created them to be through, through what he's doing in me. And um, that's, that's the whole definition of this. That's the whole reality of this is that it's somewhat twofold, like many of our vision pictures, that as he's transforming me, he's transforming my children uh, as well and, and, and guiding me into guiding them into their way, into his way for their lives. So um, a couple of the verses that, that, that help, help grow this vision picture, help uh, challenge me in this vision picture. Uh, one of them was from Luke chapter 15. You'll know it as the prodigal son where, um, the son, uh, made some mistakes. Uh, he chose, uh, wealth and fun and a different way of life than what his father had for him. And, uh, what his father believed was, was, was God's vision for them. And, uh, over the course of those mistakes and those, those, those life choices that led him down a, a different path, um, he eventually recognized where he wanted to be, where he believed he, sh he needed to be. And uh, so he went back to his father. And one of the most unique things about this story is that the father did not hold bitterness. The father did not hold him, hold him accountable. Father welcomed him with open arms, with a hug, with, with uh, engaging with him and, and putting his own coat on, putting his rings on his fingers. They threw a party because his son had come back into full recognition of what God desired for him. And that amount of grace is what I believe is needed to uh, consistently influence my children towards Christ. Um, no matter what the emotions or the feelings or the, the, the distractions that I'm experiencing in life, that I consistently show grace towards them. And in such a manner that it's influencing them to understand more about Christ and his relationship with them. And, and um, I think to, you know, the idea that of how much grace I've been shown over the course of my life, especially from my father and those who, who had an influence on me uh, and the impact that that made on my life. If I'm able to show grace and willing to show grace to my own children, uh, the consistent influence that that's going to bring in their life to lead them towards Christ and his vision for them. The other one comes from Ephesians 6, 4. Um, and I'm going to read it because y'all may not uh, know it as well. But um, it says, fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. Um, you know, I don't know about y'all, but but part of discipline in my home has always been, uh, you know, a pretty swift and, and uh, pointed, focused discipline where... Um, if my children chose the wrong or, or chose to, to do something they knew uh, was against the, the, the principles of our home, or if they, let's just say, made a mistake, um, the reaction would be pretty swift of, hey, this is what you're doing. This is what you're supposed to be doing, right? This is what you should be doing using those terms. And, and you know, this is the way that we live and this is the way you're living. And, and so it would immediately become, you know, either a spanking or a timeout or, or a go to your room kind of moment and, and think about what you've done or, you know, change, you, change what you're doing because it's not what you're supposed to be doing kind of moment. And through this vision picture, what's begun to change within my own home and, and, and not just with me, but my wife as well has been the conversation piece that comes into this part to, to this consistent influence in this area. Um, the idea that when something, a mistake is made or something is done that is against the, the, the uh, predefined um, boundaries that we live by within my home, the predefined principles that we live with uh, in my home, it's not a quick reaction of a spanking or a timeout and go think about what you're doing or think about what you've done. Uh, but it's more or less a conversation of, hey, do you recognize what, what's happened here? It's more of a, a, a desire to see them rec have the recognition within their own heart, within their own spirit, that they understand uh, the choice that was made and the, the, the leading that, that I'm seeking to lead them into. 
um, and the the desire that God has for their lives. Um, it's it's not uh, as as I grow in this vision picture, it's not uncommon to uh, have a conversation like this every day. Of okay, if we we understand where let let's talk about what happened here and almost a replaying of the story, a replaying of the experience to the point where my children are the ones kind of reiterating what happened. And all of a sudden you see the light hit them in their mind, in their eyes that, wait a second, that's, that's where things went, went sideways. That's where, that's where the, the choice was made. And so all of a sudden, okay, well, so then the questions begin. Okay. So what could we have done differently? What, how could we have entered into this situation differently? How could we have handled this situation differently. Um, and so those those verses, those passages of Scripture, there's many more that we could walk through, but those have really helped to not only define this vision picture for me, but have helped create some transformation, some change within my own life uh, in the, in the, in the, in the, um, under the umbrella of this uh, vision picture that I believe God is leading me towards. And so um, moving on, You'll see that the unique, the you, you've heard the unique action. I've said it many times, uh, but it is, um, it, it it's consistently in, to consistently influence. Um, now, just to break this down a little bit and give you some clarity on uh, the definitions of what we're talking about here. Uh, for consistently, it's 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 pretty, um, it's, it's a pretty uh, normal normal meet definition here. Uh, we're talking about uh, this idea of, of um, let me get my words out here for a second. This, this uh, I don't want to say normal, but it's more of a frequent. This is a, um, a something that, that is happening, happening uh, regularly uh, that, that isn't influenced by what well, isn't influenced. That's funny. That isn't, uh, isn't uh, affected by outside interference that the in a consistent manner to do something regularly to do something uh without without being um affected by outside interference uh and so uh the word consistent that comes up here uh when it when it relates to influence influence meaning the capacity to have an effect on the character and behavior or the beliefs uh of, of those around us um whether it be um our children like we're talking now our spouse our family uh, those we're leading. Uh, for me, it's the congregation here at the church, uh, my leaders here at the church, or the people that we pass by in the grocery store, that we're consistently influencing those people. And a part of this comes into the effect of uh, intentionally influencing those people, because um, we're going to influence people no matter what. We're going to have an impact on the people around us no matter what. Uh, the word consistently brings in the idea that we're going to do so in a manner that we've decided before, that we have uh, pre predefined for ourselves and for those around us, that this is the way we're going to influence them. Um, and so, as we encounter those we lead, whether it be our children or our family or those people that we we pastor or the people in the grocery store, that the influence we have on them is going to be not only a frequent uh, influence, one that we are are constantly doing. Uh, but a a uh, a intentional influence of seeking out to influence them in a certain way, um, uh, and so as we as we move into that, that's something that is different uh, for me. Um, that's something that is is a challenge for me um, because, like I said, I've always known that we impact those around us, and I believe in my heart there's been the there's been this desire to to consistently influence those around me, uh, to, to, you know, set up a, but the, the motivation behind that was a little different. Uh, the motivation there was, uh, so that they, they would think highly of me, right. So that they, my reputation would be built around the, among the people around me because of the way that I've impacted them. Now the change is more or less coming in the idea of the fact that I'm not doing it for my own good. I'm not doing it for them to think highly of me but consistently influencing them in a way that helps grow them and develop them um, that I believe God is leading me into that, that influencing. So consistently has more to do with um, uh, the intentionality and the um, unchanging 
ability of the influence. The fact that regardless of what's affecting me in the time that I'm always going to consistently influence the people around me in a certain way. In this case, uh, my children towards Christ, um, that no matter what I encounter um, in life and through the day, that my influence with uh, in them, my impact in their life would be consistent in a way that that's always pointing towards Christ and his will for their lives. Um, now, as we move on through this vision picture, we get to this motivation uh, piece. And, and um, this is, this is, this is pretty, I think, obviously for my children, there's a lot that comes out of this. There's a lot of motivation, but um, just, to, I'm going to read a couple just really blakely to you and, and straightforward is this, uh, one is an aching for them to realize God's vision for them, um, a willingness to concede to their choices and decisions, um, a desire to sacrifice the time and energy devoted to hearing from them, and an understanding that each child has a unique personality. I think the the, the main focus of this motivation is, is to give them independence in this way, uh, to 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 lead them in a way that is not my will for their lives and for me recognizing what God's will is for their lives, but so they might be able to recognize God's will for their lives and be able to step into that will uh, with my influence, with my guidance, if you will, that God might use me for that way. And that's the motivation is really for them to, to gain that full understanding of who, what God, who God desired for them to be um, in a way that they're recognizing it and are stepping into it with full confidence knowing that this is his will for their lives. Um, and, and, and these, these pieces in this, in this, in part of this is this desire to sacrifice the time and energy devoted to hearing from them. This is that idea that I'm willing to set things aside. I want to be able to set, I want to set things aside so that I might engage with them in a personal relationship to hear from them and to help maybe bring some clarity into the, into what the decisions they're making. Um, the, the last one to understand that each child has a unique personality. I've got three children and man, they're all three completely different and understanding that piece, um, is really, is really, uh, is a big part in understanding God's vision for each one of them. Um, and so, uh, the motivation is, is really to, to bring about a recognition within themselves and the confidence to step into that will that God has for them. Um, now, obviously, there there are things that stand in that way sometimes that that keep us from living out these vision pictures. Um, and what I've kind of mentioned here is that leading into my my desires for them rather than God's. I think even before our children are born, we have this this vision of what we would like our children to be like, uh, the success that we would like to see them experience, the uh, the person we 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 want them to be. Um, and 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 it, but however that that stands in direct direct opposition to this vision picture of desiring to influence my consistently influence my children towards Christ and his vision for their lives um if i'm more focused on what i want for them rather than what god wants for them then i'm not going to be able to consistently influence them in the way that i believe god is leading me to um I mentioned this other one too, allowing my day to affect how I interact with them. That's that's some a piece that I've I've mentioned several times. That's that's really saying goodbye to that old self by overcoming this barrier to say, hey, this is who I used to be, and this is this is I can see that becoming an issue into in this change for my life. And so uh, that's been that's been a big challenge. Uh, however, that it's it's a challenge that that I recognize and I'm willing to overcome. Um, and this last one, other people, things uh, influence being more prevalent than mine. Um, man, this is a hard one because this is a difficult one because they go to school, they're around their friends, they're, they're around people at church. Um, but I think this is where understanding that key piece of, of having that relationship with your child, if you're consistently influencing them, then your influence, regardless of whether or not, uh, the time is there will always be more prevalent than those around you. If this change is really happening. Uh, if this if this is who God's desiring for me to be, then my influence is going to be more prevalent as I consistently influence them, whether or not it's more time than the others. Um, and this last piece, the the vision imagination, imagine really imagining this person. Um, it says, I can imagine being a man who is patient, gracious, 
who sees failure as growth opportunities rather than failures and mistakes. Um, that really speaks into uh, some of those those Bible verses that we walked through earlier that 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 displaying grace and offering moments of growth rather than of hey you made a mistake fix it. It's the, the this is a person who is who is patient enough and gracious enough to see this failure as, as a growth opportunity to say, you know what? Yeah, it was a mistake. Um, you maybe could have made a, a different choice here. However, let's learn about it. In fact, I kind of walked through some of the discussions that we have with my kid. That, that's, that's coming true, which is extremely encouraging to see as I'm sitting here uh, walk, talking, walking you through it. Um, uh, next is thoughtful in his actions. Um, I've been using the word forward thinking a lot. This idea that everything that is done or every word that is said has already been thought out in a way to grow and influence, consistently influence my children. Um, this is the person I believe that I can become. This is a person I believe that uh, God wants me to become, uh, that I'm forward thinking in my, dis in my discipline. I'm forward thinking in my uh, influence. I'm forward thinking in every conversation that I have with my kids. Um, in fact, that kind of goes next into that next into the next one. A man who consistent who constantly creates experiences for his children to live out the image of Christ. This is a really really forward thinking piece because um, we all have busy schedules and busy lives. However, I've found it uh, some growth happening in the idea that and, and found it extremely fulfilling to start creating ways for my children to step into this path for their lives, uh, to step into learning more about Jesus. Uh, just one recently, I'm not going to share every detail, but we pick muscadines together and spent a lot of time and energy and sweat and eat by mosquitoes out in the yard and made jelly. And then I took my kids and passed them around to some of the people who were, who were homebound and who we wanted to visit and show some love to. And then I asked my kids to pray for these people. And each of my, my, my eight-year-old, she's nine now, she'll be nine this month, but eight-year-old, six-year-old, three-year-old, they prayed for, for these folks. And so creating those experiences, um, and, and that word constantly is where where that's still the, the vision imagination, right? That's the, these are just practice ways to step into being this person. Uh, I, I believe this is the person who, who God's creating me to be, that I'm not just doing this to practice it, but this is a constant thought process. Um, again, goes in that thoughtful in his actions. And then um, this last piece is probably my favorite. Um, this, this is a person whose children grows as their dad grows in Christ. Um, I just baptized my two older daughter, two old, my two oldest, uh, my nine year old, my six year old, and um, seeing the development of them over the past two years of this journey has been um, amazing. Um, and seeing the aspect of that that being something that is normal for me um, to see growth in them as I'm experiencing growth in myself is is enormous. <laughs> for me in this in this whole walk if there was no other motivation or no other vision imagination piece that one alone would 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 allow me the the motivation to change and to transform for them um and so uh it, it, it this 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 vision picture is 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 not only one of my favorites it's it's been the most impactful here of late uh the amount of transformation i'm seeing in this vision picture is phenomenal. And um, I hope I described it in a way that you can understand that that, that I've led you to uh, understand where I'm at in my walk. And uh, I ask for your prayers as I continue to walk in this vision picture for my life. Wow. Wish I was there in my 30s. <laughs> <laughs> Not your, what's your reflection on this? I would say it was a very powerful testimony, Todd, not just, um, you know, a man working on a vision picture, but just taking this and, and transforming this into, to God's vision for himself and, and his family and living, living into that, not just as, oh, this is something I'm doing over here to satisfy the homework that needs to be done, but just literally living into it. Um, you know, I, as I was listening to him talking, I was thinking about, uh, you know, Amy and I raising our daughter Rosa and, and how man, I wished I'd have gone through this 
20 some years ago, you know, when she was, was little, uh, you know, and then uh, dealing with finding out, you know, in the last year that she has Asperger's, you know, and, and thinking about how many things that, that we did wrong, that I'm sitting here thinking, boy, Joy, you, have, God is really speaking to you into to raising uh, your children uh, in God's vision for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well that um i just i guess um that is a, a heartfelt passion we haven't gotten there to vision pictures yet but early on uh, we had started talking about how um to have conversations and asking conversations of my kids, start there practicing with my kids before I start practicing with people in the church, you know, of um, asking them and reinforcing this idea of, you know, what's God's vision for your life. And, um, and just to see the positives of a, a much less uh, a developed picture than what Joey had, but just to see the positive results of that has just, you know, it's been um, such a blessing. So, um, and, and to this day, I think some of that is you go to my daughter's Facebook page. She's constantly posting uh, things about how, you know, um, you know, God uh, uh, is doing in her life. And, you know, I think, you know, some of that, I can't take all the blame. There've been a lot of great people or all the, all the credit, but there've been a lot of great people pouring into her life. And, um, but it certainly contributes to that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want you to see that uh, this is a man like you guys who had a good heart to begin with. I mean, he was doing his best. He was he was taking a day and and trying to make the most of that day. But two years ago, God began to change the way he existed from just kind of meandering through life and and reacting to his kids and all to this man who is establishing a picture of a man that he senses God is calling him to be, becoming very clear about it as we walk through for Ron Witten and Ron Culp, these what we're calling uh, clarifiers. We'll talk about six of them eventually that help me fully understand this vision God has for me. And then Letting it see, letting it have an impact on the man I am now, even though I'm not him yet. But instead of just waking up and just hoping the day goes well, this this design by God is that I would clearly understand who God wants me to be, and allow it to begin making changes in me today. My eyes are not on me today. My eyes are on the man I've yet to be. This is further supported by our one of our foundational scriptures, 2 Corinthians 4.18. The eyes focused on the unseen, not the seen. If I focus on the seen, I make decisions that are very temporary in, in insight and perspective. But if I would move my focus to the unseen, God's vision for me, his desire and will for me, I make decisions based on eternal wisdom, not immediate wisdom. Oh, my goodness. I'm so proud of this guy. And uh, he'll get a chance to watch this video after he gets back from his elk hunt. So um, I appreciate uh, your listening to him and comments that you've had today. I want to unfortunately move on here. I'd love to just hear more and maybe give each of you a chance to encourage this young man because this is brand new to him too. But he's getting to experience this some, for some of us 20 and 30 years earlier in their life, in his life, than in yours and mine. And wow, <laughs> pretty, pretty miraculous. Awesome stuff, huh? Man. Amen. Talk, talk about encouraging us. You know, and those of us, especially the two Rons who have yet to walk into this part of this journey, I'm here to tell you, when I tell you, you have no idea what's coming. And if you think today what we're doing is exciting, you just wait. There's a testimony of what I'm referring to. So 
Wonderful. Well, Ron, uh, Ron Culp, I'm going to have you share in just a moment. But Paul, uh, would you share with these guys real quick, again, who you are and where you're from and what you do, just to just to help these guys know uh, you as well? Sure. Yeah. So I'm, I'm my name is Paul Osborne. I'm a pastor in north central Minnesota with the Christian Missionary Alliance. I've been a pastor almost 15 years now. And uh, as far as the process, like Todd said, I, I kind of worked through the process, but I'm still working on the process of God, allowing God to move and to shape and to uh, help me be different, uh, help me be who he's created me to be. And so that's kind of, I'm just, I got, I went through the vision pictures. I've got vision pictures for the church, but like even with my own vision pictures, I'm still going back to them and saying, okay, God, here we are. What's new today? What do you want from me? And then we're walking in that in a very intentional way. That's probably been the best thing for me in this whole process, intentionality. About your family real quick? Yeah, I, I, I have three, three kids. I have two that are out of the house. My daughter just had my first grandbaby, so I'm enjoying grandparent, grandparenthood. That's wonderful. Uh, little Maggie is her name, my daughter's daughter. Uh, so I got Grace Duncan. He's the middle child. My daughter is 23. Grace is 20. Or Grace is 23. My son is 21. He lives in St. Cloud. And he's working with Costco. And then I have I have a my youngest name is Ruth, and she just turned 16 yesterday. So we just celebrated her sweet 16 and uh, our you know that whole driving thing in Minnesota because now you're driving. So experiencing that. So yeah. So that's good. My wife. I've been married to my wife. <laughs> It's a mystery. Don't show her this, Todd. <laughs> 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 Poor guy. Yeah, I've been married to my wife is where we lost you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, I've been with my wife for 26 years. Okay. 26 years. So, yes. And Paul is a pastor of a Christian Missionary Alliance Church in Hillman, Minnesota, up by Lake Mille Lacs. If you up by Lake Mille Lacs. If you look on the map, you'll see Lake Mille Lacs. So right up there. Yep. In September, transition from now he's uh, we worked together six and a half years, and we've transitioned now to meeting once a month at the end of the month, and uh, we're just catching up. I'm encouraging and uh, helping him stay true to his vision pictures and all. So um, that's not necessarily the way everybody does it, but it works good for Paul and I at this season of this work to be uh, uh, connected once a month now. After all of this hard work, he is. He has done. And the guy you're seeing and hearing today is not the guy I started with. This is this is not the guy I met at the big men's conference at Big Sandy Camp. God has done a miraculous work in Paul and his family. So, uh, man, I appreciate you uh, taking some time to be with us today. Thank you for the opportunity to be here. Thank you, you guys. Bet, you bet. Man. All right. So, Mr. Ron Culp, you get to wrap us up today and um, uh, tell a little bit about yourself first and then share a little bit about where we are and what God is doing in our work together. Okay, sure. So, I'll keep the personal uh, story short because I think we may have done that before. But um, uh, basically, I was raised up in Washington State, met my wife at Bible College. She's from Missouri. And, uh, you know, eventually God led us back here. And that certainly had something to do with it. But um, we've been married 33 years, have three wonderful kids that all love Jesus. Um, uh, oldest is 26. Wedding? Pardon me? Who performed your wedding ceremony? Uh, yes, your father-in-law. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> he, uh, he was pastoring in Rolla, Missouri, where Sand uh, Sanders' hometown. And, um, the, yeah, at the time that we were getting married and so he he did our, our wedding so and i was born in rolla missouri yeah i understand you're from that area yes and you and todd go back to that area and knew uh, each other when he was in st james and all that yeah pretty cool uh, it is a small world huh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the connections are, are amazing um so uh so uh, yeah talking about our kids three kids uh uh oldest is 26 her name is katie and uh, her and her husband, Elijah, they uh, lead worship in their church, which uh, her husband's dad is a pastor uh, there in the Cincinnati, Ohio area. Then um, 
my uh, second child is her name is Karis. She is at Cedarville University. She's a grad student studying uh, to get her doctor in pharmacy. And then my youngest has, has a son named Caleb, and he uh, just graduated this spring. He is now down near Todd in uh, Branson area, going to um, College of the Ozarks. And uh, um, just loving it so far. Just uh, he's keeping up with the schoolwork. He's, he's not um, super excited about the academic side of things, but he's certainly loving the social side of things. But he's, <laughs> he's staying on top of his schoolwork too. Man, so. that's my own heart right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so anyway, that's just, I guess, a little bit about us. But I've been here in DeSoto as a senior pastor for seven years. Prior to that, I had been in associate pastor ministries for um, 22 years. Each ministry, I, you know, great churches that I've been so blessed to be a part of. Um, and really, I guess by most standards, fairly long tenures, I mean, in those churches. But I never saw myself being a senior pastor. Maybe, maybe part of that was because I really didn't view myself as that much of a leader, you know. And um, but this process already it, it, into it now, uh, one year, uh, just over a year with Todd, um, has really helped me redefine what leadership really is and what that looks like and has given me an encouragement and a confidence that, yeah, God can use me in this, you know? And uh, um, then um, I guess we're at, in this process, we're at um, the communication mindsets. So we just kind of finished this up and it's been eye-opening to me, um, finding my, understanding myself a little bit, like we've all been kind of talking about, you just really kind of just, I don't know, you. You just pick things up from the way you're raised, from the environment around you. You just kind of go through life without really thinking too much about, you know, why we communicate the way we communicate. So this has been been a good eye opener for me. Um, and and even though we didn't spend much time directly on this um, up until ten years ago or so, um, well, and especially as a, a kid and a young adult. Um, I would, I was one who pretty much avoided any kind of conflict at all costs. <laughs> so, um, the, you know, this, you know, and, you know, like I say, 10 years ago or so, you know, really God's been challenging me in that area, uh, to see some of those opportunities as, as Joey used the words so perfectly as growth opportunities. When we have those, um, moments that are uncomfortable conversations that might be seen as conflict moments or whatever, but are, but are growth opportunities and, um, and really seeing and had some opportunities to uh, have some conversations with folks that um, come to the understanding that if we just avoid those conversations, then we, I mean, I mean, it, it, you know, I think of one lady, particularly in our congregation that, you know, nobody ever really stood up and and was willing to have a hard conversation with her in love and um and if nobody ever does where's the opportunity for her to grow and so um yeah that's been a challenge for me in all of this um i guess a couple of the mindsets that we went through that i um one that was a total shock to me that 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 came to surface was the guilt-ridden challenger mindset um I had always thought I took great pains in avoiding communicating in any way, shape, or form that would put guilt on people. I, I really thought I tried hard to do that. And then uh, um, uh, Todd was, um, uh, he listened to a sermon one week and, and kind of, you know, we kind of talked about some of that and some of the language that I use. And lo and behold, I was kind of, kind of shocked that I was using language of, well, you, sh you know, you should do this. You, you ought to, you, ought, you know, and I'm like, Oh my goodness! I'm, <laughs> I'm using this this guilt-ridden uh, challenger mindset, and um, and you know that is not what Jesus did. And there again, not not looking back to in in this study to say how awful and terrible I've been, but <laughs> you know where I am now and where God wants to lead me, and and that's been um, a a real growth area, and uh, that I think God is leading me in. Another one that has been. Um, that I discovered where I'm at is the professor mindset in that, um, you know, given a lot of information and not really getting to as much application as 
um, as is necessary, I think. And so really, really trying to spend more time in application and not so much, enough information to get to the application. But, and part of that process has been too, um, um, really leaning more on the Holy Spirit to have an understanding of where people are at so that I'm not just giving information and trying to answer questions that they're not asking. So, um, you know, and, and, you know, this is, this is all just, you know, the whole part of the process that I'm at. Um, one of the um, uh, homework assignments that, that Todd gave was to ask some other people uh, their, you know, about their communication and um, what motivates them in their conversation. And one um, thing that was really eye-opening to me in one of those conversations, I asked a friend, um, you know, about his preaching and conversations and, and, you know, and he told me about one person that we both mutually know that when they communicated, uh, and this was true, consistent with his whole career as a pastor, whenever he communicated, you just knew with beyond a shadow of a doubt that he loved you. You just knew it. And so it challenged me to go back and rethink some of the things and, you know, and ask myself, do people really know, would they say that of me? Would they say they, they would know beyond a shadow of a doubt when they heard me that I loved them? You know, and I go back to the guilt-ridden challenger mindset, using language like that, no, <laughs> they probably wouldn't, you know? So um, I guess this is this is kind of where this God is working on my life and in some of this. Um, uh, oh, and, and another uh, piece that I, I think has been in the last few weeks, months, um, as Todd and I were talking about some of this in preaching, and um, Sunday afternoons have typically been a, they're kind of a struggle um, some days, especially like if, you know, um, Sandra and I go out to eat or we're, you know, doing something Sunday afternoon. I, of being engaged with her in conversation. Um, I'm replaying Sunday in my head, you know, and, you know, ways that, oh, it could have gone so much better if I'd only done this or this, <laughs> you know, and, you know, and just really um, go, that process of, okay, well, if I've been before the Lord and I'm obedient and saying what he wants me to say, and um, I've, I've, put in my due diligence and and what God wants me to do then just leave it in his hands when I'm done <laughs> and you know and that's helped so much you know so not not that I'm always yeah I'm still there sometimes you know but I I think Sandra would say that much yeah it, that that is a, a definite um positive part of the journey that we're on so not not uh, being more engaged on Sunday afternoon so less time dwelling in what happened so I guess those are some of the things that I guess uh I uh been at um been been God's been working in my life through this journey of uh talking about mindsets understanding people that's been a huge one um uh yeah there's some some folks that that I think I have a little better understanding now of Kind of where they're coming from and how I might be able to help them um, a, a, in the future now that we've gone through this. Yeah. And, and I know we're going to get into it, but the, I, I would say one of the, the most positive mindsets, the last one we talked about was the uh, bridge builder mindset and um, really just, just helping with that process of connecting with people to you know, ultimately um, help them and influence them for Christ. So Keith and Paul, that's a that's number 21 that's not on your list. In, in working through this with everybody, I'm learning. I'm being made aware even more. And as Ron and I uh, were studying through these, um, there was a description of a motivation that we've all experienced, perhaps, in talking with someone where their whole desire was just to build a connection with me. Um, um, Bob Reardon, the former president, now passed away, but was the president of Anderson University. I would describe him as a bridge builder motivated person. 
who when he spoke with you, all he was thinking about was you. All he wanted to know was more about you. All he wanted to know is how he could know you in a greater way to understand you, to build this connection with our, with our relationship. And I did not see that in any of the other descriptions. And so thank you, Ron, for helping me see that one. Um, and we've added that one to our, to our list. Comments or questions for Ron, any of those of you who are not only listening today, but have been through this already. Ron, thank you for sharing with us today. Just uh, this process that you're going through kind of makes it revisit in my mind, even, you know, afresh and anew, how, you know, how am I viewing my conversations, my communications? Uh, you know, is this something even that I need to go back in my notes and 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 revisit again so well, that's one of the things that i find is the more i work with todd oh my gosh i need to go back in my notes and revisit some of these things <laughs> so yeah that's excellent and in fact i will send you all an updated copy because all of these have really experienced some tweaking and updating as i've worked with ron witten and ron culp and jessica right now in this in this study so um, I'll send you a fresh copy. How's that? Good. Our time is come to an end here today, guys. I hate this. I would love to just hear an hour a piece of what God is doing with you. I'm so excited and encouraged by today and uh, by each of you and just want to close in a word of prayer. Again, this topic, this time is all practice for you. It's challenging you to put into words what are you sensing God is doing. It's challenging you to put into words eventually for the two Rons, what's God's vision for me? If I'm asked that question, do I have a reply? It's challenging you to put into words, how would I describe the communicator I am today and help me see how God is making a difference in that. So um, I am recording this and I will edit it and then I'll make it available as a YouTube link and you're welcome to use it however you want. If you want your spouse to sit down and watch it with you, if you want to review this at some point, you're welcome to download and keep it if you like. But um, I will, uh, I'll make that available for you. Any final comments or questions from anybody? Just thanks for letting me be here this morning with you guys. I appreciate getting to know you. It's fun to hear how God is working and moving in your lives. And I just want to encourage you. Stay the path. Uh, God is faithful. He is good. So keep up the good work. I'm, I'm proud of you guys. It's hard, but it's good. Amen. Thank you, Paul. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Th again, thank you, too, uh, for allowing me to be a part of this today. It's it's so encouraging uh, to see what God is doing in each and every one of your lives and just to experience that with you. What a beautiful blessing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. Well, I will encourage you to go back to this devotional and read through this because just as Paul has just said, the, the time that most people quit is right about the time it's about to explode. Hmm. The time that you become most discouraged, like I'm not getting this or whatever our reasoning is for feeling dismayed or behind or on the slow kid in the class or whatever those are all normal regular feelings and i'm you're not the only one i have every every objection or hesitancy that you can voice to me i've heard it a hundred times because it's all of our experience so um this particular devotion claudia calls it a page turner and in in my in my devotional when i come across a reading like this and it really impacts us. We turn the corner of that page down. We call it a page turner. That's a that's a turner. That's one that uh, we're hearing echoing through this book. Some of the things that God was saying to me, and I'm seeing it in print for the first time. So if that's a normal, if you have a, a normal devotional time with your wife, wonderful. That's just great. But if that would be something new, I'd like to encourage you to consider this particular one, my utmost for his highest. There are a number of versions. The contemporary language version 
is highly recommended. Since this was written in the 1700s, we started with that one and both of us would leave going, I have no idea what he said. Um, <laughs> so, uh, just a little caveat there. Wonderful. Well, Mr. Keith Klossner, would you mind closing us in a word of prayer today? My thanks to each of you guys for your time together. And uh, Keith, would you close us today? Yes. Father, what a wonderful encouragement uh, today to just see uh, these men gathered, uh, everyone gathered with our focus being on you, Father, our focus on, on what you are doing, uh, how you're leading, how you're motivating, how you are guiding and directing and, and loving on us, Father Lord. I just thank you for that. I, I ask, uh, Father Lord, that you'd bless each and every one is gathered here today as we go about the the things that you're leading us to do uh, with the rest of our day and the rest of our week, Father Lord. Just may your blessing fall. Thank you, Father Lord, for this opportunity. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 God bless you guys. We'll be back God on bless our you. regular schedule next week. So we'll look forward to catching up with you then.